1985, the year I was born, Nintendo was invading North America and would change video games forever. Little did we know in the movie industry we were getting some of the most staple retro nostalgic movies ever to be made. And when it comes to music there sure are a lot of good tunes, but I've noticed something. A lot of these major hit songs have now become memes in the present day. Let's look at 1985. Every year we make it through, more and more memories are locked into place in our minds. Certain video games or movies or even a simple chorus from a song you knew and loved can mean so much. Let's take a moment and talk about what makes each year from our past so special. On today's episode, the year is... Let's start with what might be one of the most popular, most known, most loved retro movies of all time. That's Back to the Future. I feel like anytime you're at a convention or just talking with buddies who are reminiscing about old movies or cool old nostalgic movies, Back to the Future comes up time and time again, whether it's the hoverboard, Marty McFly, the vest, the DeLorean, time travel, any of that. People love to talk about Back to the Future, and I really do, like I said, I feel like it's become one of the, or the staple, for retro people or nostalgic conversation, Back to the Future kind of is holding that spot that I feel like the movie of the past. Welcome to my latest experiment. This is a big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. Next is debatably one of my favorite movies of all time, definitely top five comedies of all time, and that's Pee-wee's Big Adventure. And I think where this movie stands out so much and is so prominent for people who saw it back in the day, you know, for, for kids or adults who were young at heart, is this movie got straight into the comedy. And I think that's really key uh, for grabbing people's attention. You know, it's not one of those movies where you have to go, okay, just, just make it past, you know, the first 20 minutes and you're gonna love it, or or wait this long and you'll kind of understand it. No, Pee-wee's Big Adventure, within seconds of the movie starting, you see what's going on. You see Pee-wee's attitude. It's a funny dream and then all of a sudden, Pee-wee has one of the most insane gadgets to make himself breakfast. I just love it on every level. Paul Rubens, continually funny through the entire movie. Funny gag after gag. I love everything about it. The cast, I love Francis, I love Pee-wee, I love Dottie. I love Spec. I love Chuck. It is a fantastic movie. If you've never seen it, I truly do think it holds up. I know a lot of people and a lot of comedies have been really inspired by this movie. So if you never saw Pee Wee's Big Adventure, I definitely say do so. So just like Back to the Future kind of holding the spot as like one of the retro movies, I feel like this is a runner up or even top three most talked about movies among retro people and that is the Goonies. I think, hey you guys, is so known to so many people that I hear people say it where I don't even think they know it's from The Goonies. This movie was a giant staple. Uh, it has become a staple for the whole world. Something that's interesting too is when I was kind of watching it back, looking at some scenes, I also realized I guess 1985 was a fun time for fun contraptions because I never really thought about it until looking at Pee Wee's Big Adventure right after the Truffle Shuffle has been done, which is by the way another staple in the world, the Truffle Shuffle. Right after that's done, another gadget goes off, you know, the bowling ball rolling down, a different way to open a gate. I feel like contraptions back then was a fun thing to look at because back then, in 1985, we didn't have as much as we had now, where it wouldn't be as exciting for us to see something like that. But back then, seeing these funny gadgets and gizmos going on just to do something so simple uh, was not only comedic, but really cool to look at. By far my favorite Rocky movie of all time, Rocky IV. I love this movie to death. This is the ultimate showdown that we all wanted to see because this was man versus man, but not really. To everybody watching, it was like man versus cyborg versus machine. Drago was an unstoppable machine, which brings me to my next point why I love this movie so much. Rocky IV gave us one of the most epic training workout video routines, montages you've ever seen because this was giving us the comparison of Rocky a man's man, a regular guy, working out the way we all do. Push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, punching things, jumping things, running out in the snow, working out the way we can. And then we have Drago, back in his area. 
hooked up to machine after machine. Everything is being tested. Everything's being gauged. We know exactly how hard he's hitting. We know exactly what he can do. We know what he's capable of. And seeing this in the movie, I think really set us up for one of the most epic, like anticipated, like, oh my gosh, how's Rocky gonna win this? He, there's no way. Draco's a machine, almost quite literally. So Rocky IV, nonetheless, one of the best movies out there. Also, I didn't realize the Rocky movies started in the 70s. I don't know, I, I never really grasped that before. That makes them even that much better to me, way ahead of their time. Last movie before we move on to the video games, and that is Return to Oz, which is an unofficial sequel to The Wizard of Oz. Now, this movie sticks out to me because I liked The Wizard of Oz as a kid. Heck, I loved The Wizard of Oz, and I still do. Return to Oz was something I was very into. It reminded me of movies like Willow, or, or Labyrinth, you know, weird animations, weird claymations, weird animatronics, weird characters, weird character models. It just was so visually different and even I highly recommend checking it out to this day, go back to it, look at it because I feel like we've lost a lot of this animation and this, this I don't even know if you'd call it animation, a lot of this style of visual effects with CGI nowadays, I feel like we've We've lost that feel, but man, Return to Oz did it in such a way that as a kid, I was just so blown away the entire movie. Look at these visual effects. And that's when I wasn't even really into like any video production or anything like that, but I was just like, look at these video effects. Look at the way these things are happening. That character's moving, the way that character talks. It was claymation, it felt like to me on steroids. I don't know what the actual, what it actually was, but man, a visual wonder. Highly recommend. Yes, I actually recommend checking out Return to Oz. Gotta check it out. Mom. Kicking off video games with one of my favorites in 1985, Gun Dot Smoke. Gun Smoke on the arcade. Now the NES version did come out in 1988, which I did like that version as well, but I started off playing the one in the arcades. And man, this was a great game. It's almost like you could call it a top-down vertical shooter because you are playing as a cowboy, but you're always moving, you're always going. Very simple gameplay mechanics. It felt like a shooter game, but with cowboy aspects, playing as a real guy just on an old dusty road and different levels, riding horses, gathering weapons from people around the town. Such simple gameplay, such simple storyline, nothing to it, but a great, wonderful time where everything works the way you wanted it to. If you haven't played any Gunsmoke game, definitely check out Gunsmoke. Big standout for me as a kid at home was Tag Team Match Muscle. Such a brutally, brutally hard to look at video game because this game looks bad. It even plays pretty bad, but you know how it is back then, if you were alive back in the days where we didn't have a lot of choices, you kinda get what you got and you enjoyed it because that's all you really had. This game, otherwise known as Muscle, is what we pretty much all called it, was what we had a lot as a kid, and that's a game that I played all the time, and it's one of the wrestling games. It's not as good as any of the other wrestling games, in my opinion, on the NES, but I just played it so much that it became something that I got so used to, and it became nostalgic to me, so playing this game, Watching others play this game, seeing gameplay on YouTube, very nostalgic, big standout for me in 1985, for me and my brothers. Gauntlet on the arcade, what a fantastic game. I actually have Gauntlet sitting right behind me. But man, I feel like this game really was the birth for me of my love for these style of games. You know, games like Path of Exile, games like Nine Parchments. These are games that I play more than I thought I would have when I was a kid. You know, I liked Gauntlet Arcade quite a bit as a child, and I was like, man, I played this a lot. Grew up, still played it. Grew up, kind of never played again, and didn't know if those Gauntlet style games would ever like hold precedent in my life. Life. But when games like I said, Nine Parchments came out, Path of Exile, Gauntlet Slayer Edition for the PS4, man, sink so many hours into these type of games. I love the dependency you have on the people you're playing with, whether it's online or co-op in the room. Gauntlet Arcade, obviously, with other people on an arcade. Just built such a fun time uh, playing these type of games and really just made me love um, this more top-down style of co-op games. 
How could you not mention the game that changed the world, pretty much? Super Mario Bros. Super Mario Bros. is... It's almost like it's the game. You can say that it's responsible for so much. I don't know what level I can lock that in as a true statement. Like, oh, it's responsible for this. It's responsible for this. It's responsible for this. But I think we can all collectively look back and know that when Nintendo came on the scene in North America in 1985 and Super Mario Bros. came out, things were never the same. We can't say what exactly was linked to Super Mario Bros, or maybe some people can, better historians, but I know personally for me on a personal level, and just from being in this world, nothing was ever the same in video games after Super Mario Bros came out. That's just the way it is, there's no dancing around it. So Super Mario Bros, 1985, I'm not going to explain the game. You know everything about that game, I'm sure you do. So Super Mario Bros, thanks for existing. Ghosts and Goblins came out in the arcade and it came out on the NES in 1985. Me on a personal level, way more time with the NES version. You've probably heard the stories if you've never played it. This game is brutally difficult, but not even for the sense that it's just brutally difficult, but that when you beat it, it sends you back to the beginning and makes you do it all over again. As a kid, I never focused on that. I focused on the fun side-scrolling platforming element. And to me, as a younger dude, I was a baby. I was born in 1985. But when I played it, you know, when I was eight, eight years old, five years old, whatever age I played it in, Ghosts and Goblins was really cool to me because I loved side-scrolling platforming games, and I wouldn't say I necessarily loved the gameplay mechanics of that game, but what I did love, as many of you know, I love horror stuff. And back then when I was a kid, I feel like it was kind of like a, a pre-stage of me getting into liking horror elements in video games. No, it wasn't a horror game, a survival horror game of any sort, but it definitely had those darker elements and atmospheric tones that I definitely wasn't playing at that young of an age. So it might even be kind of responsible for me like slowly getting my groove into darker style video games as I got older. Last one for video games before we jump into music is Duck Hunt. You're not paying attention to me, Jack. Now you have to try the other leading brand. Jack, I know you like Eagles better, but you have to try them both, you geek. Will you pay attention to me? Don't let this happen to you. <laughs> Duck Hunt is a huge staple in video games. I would say, I would almost dare say, I, I'm pretty sure, that Duck Hunt is the gun game. When anybody says, oh, did you ever play the game when you were a kid with the gun? Nine times out of 10, they're talking about Duck Hunt. This was such a staple and such a unique thing. I know other consoles were doing it. I know arcades were doing it. But for some reason, Duck Hunt held down the fort. Everybody who talked about Duck Hunt, everybody loved Duck Hunt. Everybody wanted to shoot the dog in Duck Hunt, ex except I did it really that much. I know everybody says that on the internet, but it wasn't really my thing. I was never blaming the dog for laughing at me. I was like, I suck and I need to get better. So the dog was a little bit of motivation for me, if I'm honest. The hit songs of 1985. Let me make that clear, by the way. These are hit songs of 1985. Not necessarily all of these came out in 1985, but man, a lot of these charts were dominated by, by Wham! And with that being said, I will start out with Wham! The first song that stuck out to me in 1985, Careless Whisper. If you don't know what song that is, it's the sexy saxophone song that has pretty much become a meme at this point. You know, I'm not going to play the song, but the... You know what it is. I love that this song came out in 1985, and to this day it's such a still prominently played song. Yes, not necessarily for how good of a song it is, which it is, but more in a meme sense, so at least it's holding on strong in the year 220. Well, that's when I filmed this video. I want to know what love is by Foreigner. Man, I absolutely adore this song. I don't know if I've ever said this on the show before. I probably have, but I'm pretty, a pretty big sucker for like overly dramatic love songs. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. Ultimate love song. I love the song. A lot of love in this conversation. So interesting that another one of these songs that was very prominent in 1985 has also become pretty memeable these days. And that's Take On Me by AHA. I've seen people meme this all the time and it's, been, it's still holding its popularity. But also, Weezer just redid it with Finn Wolfhard. I think he's in the song, or at least he's in the music video. 
That's one of the characters from Stranger Things, if you don't know. And what a great song it is. Although it is, you know, pretty memeable these days, whatever, I still think the song is a fantastic song. Love the music video, especially for 1985. Uh, love the sketch drawings and everything they did with it. So, aha take on me, fantastic. Boys of Summer by Don Henley. This to me is my favorite song to hear when I'm driving down the beach, down PCH, I live by the beach, I'm always down at the beach, but when this song comes on and it kicks in and that, that guitar settles in, I love to have the window down, I feel, I feel like an old guy, you know, get me my convertible and take, take the top down and let the, the wind blow in my hair, I, but it's true, I love cruising down the beach, kind of like that late night feel, the song has a little edge feeling to it, I love it, I, uh, fantastic, Don Henley, you did an awesome job on this song, for real. I can't tell you how much I heard Pat Benatar playing through my house when I was a kid. We Belong Together by Pat Benatar was a hit song in 1985. And this holds a lot of nostalgic value for me in a different way than most things do. And that's because it holds a lot of heart for me with my sister. And you don't really hear me talk about my sister much on the show because my sister's the oldest and I'm the youngest. So we didn't necessarily cross over as much as I did my brothers because we were always playing video games together and stuff like that. But with my sister, anytime I'd walk by her room, man, she was just in the late 80s, early 90s, just always rocking out to Pat Benatar, and I'm sure we'll talk about it in the future, Mariah Carey. So for me, when I get to have things nostalgically attached to me in a way that make me feel a certain way, like a certain sense of love with my sister is really cool because we don't have too much nostalgic things together because again, we were so far separated in age. I think we're exactly 10 years apart, so that's that. The next one is Too Late for Goodbyes by Julian Lennon. And if you've never heard that song or that name, you might recognize Lennon, and it is, yes, John Lennon's son. Yes, John Lennon from the Beatles, otherwise one of the most popular icons in the world in music as a whole. Julian Lennon doesn't have too many hit songs. He has a few here and there, but Too Late for Goodbyes was definitely his biggest hit song. He's written other things since then. I think to this day, he's still doing stuff with music and even something with cinema, if I'm correct. Too Late for Goodbyes is a really fun song, a really good song. If you like the Beatles or if you like John Lennon, he genuinely does have a little bit of a John Lennon tone to him. He definitely looks like John Lennon in a very specific way as well. It actually is a song that I would hear all the time and Ricky and I actually both really dig this song and still kind of listen to it here and there when we're out doing stuff so Too Late for Goodbyes by Julian Lennon uh, give, give it a spin on your record if you have one preferably Really cool to look back on 1985, the year I was born. It was such an important time in video games, especially with Nintendo, uh, movie industries with Back to the Future and the Goonies, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, uh, music with Wham! and a lot of cool romance songs that I love. 1985, what a fantastic year. Let me know what you think of that year. Did you like the music more? Did you like the video games more? Did you like, what did you like? Were you born? Were you alive? What'd you think? All right, you guys, have a fantastic day. We're gonna do 1986 next, so I'll start thinking. Throw me some things down in the comments if you have anything in 1986 that you think might be a big, important part in the world, or maybe even my life. Maybe you can take some guesses. Have a good one, you guys.